Well, Mayor Mike, welcome back. Welcome to your regular spot here yep, for back on track. Mayor's Monday at WSAU, WSAU.com. Again, I, I keep telling you this, you're not allowed to go internationally without my approval. We've got to, we've got to, we got to keep this, we got to run a tight ship here, Mr. Well, Mayor. Maybe next time you can just tag along. Uh, we'll see if it's in the budget at the station. And Why not? Yeah. I, I, I like where this Do is going Do a live already. remote, maybe. I like where this is going already. <laughs> I mean, we, we've got it. We've got to, to better understand ourselves. We've got to understand what's going on elsewhere. Oh, right? that's for true. Yes. Why not? Uh, well, uh, but you know, for going on here, as we've said, um, this is kind of in a quiet spot right now. But there is some stuff bubbling under the surface, yep. uh, specifically stuff that uh, it's going to impact people coming in and out of Stevens Point, and that's uh, Business Fifty One, which is probably going to be up for a, a big facelift here in the next few years. It is. So the road is getting in, uh, to a point where we need to do something. Uh, as you know, Plover uh, redid their stretch of Business Fifty One. Whiting recently completed their stretch of Business Fifty One, and now we have the three mile stretch in the city that's the last one. It's a little bit different because in two thousand five. The city of Stevens Point chose to take a buyout from the Department of Transportation, and I don't remember the exact dollar amount. Uh, I want to say it was like seven or eight million, but don't hold me to that. Uh, so we now are responsible for all of the cost, um, in my opinion. And I was on council at the time; I was fairly new, but it was a poor decision, arguably the worst decision I've ever made, to, to vote in favor of that buyout. Because when they redid it in Plover and when they redid it in Whiting, that was a Department of Transportation project. So they handled all the funding, they handled the design, and, and basically everything. Um, now, for our stretch, we could be looking at $40 million, uh, which is a pretty big chunk of change that's going to be borne by the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we want to make sure we do it right. Um, do we want to keep it the same? Is two lanes in each direction um, working? Is that how we want to resurface it? Do we want to uh, look at making it one lane in each direction with a turn lane in the middle, um, making the 12-foot the lane a, a little more realistic and potentially putting bike lanes in there? Or do we want to pull the trigger and spend a, a, a considerable sum more actually widening the road, um, which means you have to acquire properties all along that three-mile stretch? That is by far my least favorite. Um, I think we need to work at the very least within the right-of-way that we have existing. Uh, but we, you know, we need to accommodate all sorts of things. Utilities go in there, the sidewalks, um, and then the the road surface. Um, you know, people travel that through motor vehicles, the bicycles, skateboards, motorcycles, uh, uh, foot traffic, everything really but hot air balloons, I think. And <laughs> we need to figure out what's going to work. Now, the, the answer might not be the same for every stretch. Mm -hmm. Generally, we have three kind of uh, areas. We have the North Division Street Corridor which is predominantly businesses. Then we have a stretch of residential that goes from, say, 4th Avenue-ish. I mean, you've got businesses there too, but it goes from 4th Avenue all the way down to the, the south side uh, near Patch Street. And then from Patch Street south, it gets a, a mix, a pretty good mix of residential and business uh, in some cases. So it may not be the same solution for everything, but those are one of the things that we're going to start talking about now because in three to five years, we're going to need to do something and nothing in government moves quickly. So we're sending out a postcard. Uh, I think it's a postcard. We're going to ask, uh, do a survey uh, that people can complete online. And that's going to be coming out in March. Then we're going to begin public hearings in May. Uh, we have at least one scheduled, but it's not set in stone yet for the date. So we'll keep you posted on that at maybe a, another Mayor's Monday. But I want people to start being aware of this. Start thinking about how you use that business 51 corridor and what works for you, what doesn't work and how can we make it better? You mentioned a great point there. I, I don't know that I've heard this happen quite often, you know, in, in business like this, sending out a survey, taking an, an online thing like this, that people, you know, with a special code that they can log into and, and, and tell this. So you're really looking for kind of a wide spectrum of feedback here from all kinds of users. Arguably, this is going to be the largest project that the city undertakes in a generation. Um, so we want to make sure we do it right, and we want to make sure that uh, we're not doing what I want or what, you know, uh, Michael wants. We want to make sure that it's going to be the best for the whole community. Uh, and that's why we're soliciting that input. And, and this, and, and it's a, a big part of the city. I mean, this is, I would, I would say, this is your doormat, to Stephen's point. Would, because I would agree. this is, I mean, it's the exit I take all the time mm -hmm. coming down here, you know, whether I'm, you know, maybe 
partaking in you know some festivities at the brewery or mm -hmm. you know coming down here to, to catch a show or coming down here to chat with you once right. a month that's, that's one of your where favorites right yeah well of course <laughs> that's what we do this for but yeah it is so and now is the time to get involved not two years from now when the design is 50 or 60 percent done uh, because then it's really expensive and extremely difficult to get those changes made now at the, the ground level uh, is where we want to get that input so we can design it correctly the first time. Yeah, because those architects aren't cheap. Once right. the clock starts on those, you're you're going to be paying a pretty penny for the every day, every week that they are designing yep. this. So we, you really want to get the idea now to make sure, again, that this is done right the first time, be that from the, the sewer pipes that you mm -hmm. put underneath it to the surface to the street lights to the stoplights everything all inclusive so everything's on the table at this point mm -hmm. and again when uh, when will can people expect those postcards to, to show well, so we're, we're going to send out a mailing or, or at least make people aware of it in march we haven't nailed down anything yet as to specifics uh, but we're still working on that so in march um, people will be able to start providing that input through the survey you can provide input right now Contact my office, contact the public works department, uh, you know, your older person. Provide that input to the city now. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, again, three to five years on the timeline to when the uh, the concrete starts pouring, so to speak. Roughly, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, well, again, we'll hopefully people will get involved in this process early. And you can, again, mm -hmm. get this done right the first time, especially since you're going to be footing the, the entire bill for it. So, right. uh, $40 million, have you thought? how that could be paid for yet is the city saving money now we're or? thinking of a bake sale okay um <laughs> no i there, there's really only one way to do it and that's to borrow mm -hmm. um and then of course the borrowing is is born on the burden uh, you know born uh, on the shoulders of the taxpayer like myself mm -hmm. um and everybody watching and listening who lives in the city of stevens point or uh uses you know maybe they're employed in the city uh, or rent uh, those sorts of things that's going to eventually have to come back in the form of taxes to, to pay for that road so it, have you thought, you know, maybe putting some aside for a down payment now? Or, we, we So or... we, we've got uh, money in reserves. We also have been applying for um, uh, grants through the state and through the federal government uh, that usually have a two-year window mm -hmm. so to, to apply. Every two years, there's one in particular, the STP Urban Grant, um, that is, uh, we, we apply for it, and we're hoping that we'll get some assistance from the federal and state level but of course, that's still taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, we will certainly be looking forward to following this, uh, you know, all the way through at, uh, mm -hmm. at the speed of government. Sometimes. At the speed so of government. Like say, it might be something we get sick of talking about, but yep. we're going to keep the people informed. Yeah, right? the, the key is get involved early. Yeah. Uh, you know, what? I'm, I'm going to give you a little segue here because sure. on Business 51, uh, we have Belts Ice Cream. Mm -hmm. And Belts has been a staple. They're celebrating 20 years now, I think, mm -hmm. um, in the city or something along those lines. And uh, actually, it's got to be more than twenty years. Yeah. I mean, regardless, it's a it's a big year for them. It might sure. even be no, it can't be forty. We'll, regardless, we'll fact check it one way. But that's on Business Fifty One. Yeah. And when you know belts opens, some people take that as a sign of spring. Mm -hmm. So spring is in the air. Uh, trivia is just around the corner. We've already had to close our toboggan runs over at Iverson Park because there's just no way to consistently keep the ice or what we call slush in the the, the toboggan runs. But we're going to keep all of the rest of our winter sports areas open as long as they're safe. So the sled hills will remain open. Uh, the ice skating rinks will remain open as much as we can. Just don't expect uh, a whole lot of maintenance. They won't necessarily be in great condition because the weather is going to be fluctuating so much now. When, when the ice skates start to uh, start to grind on concrete, grind on concrete that's concrete usually a gravel, sign that yeah. it's maybe time to, time yeah. to hang them up. Or you're skating in four inches of water. Yeah, yeah. That, that would also be a, a very good sign as well, that it may be time to hang it up. But, hey, yeah. we're, we're, we've got some cold days coming up. We're going to hang on to it, uh, you know, as long as we can, that festive yeah. downtown holiday atmosphere, right? Well, yeah, you know, and spring is in the air, and that's one of the other things that happens is that we're going to start addressing some of the potholes. We had cold patch crews out um, last week doing some work. Um, a lot of the projects now for summer are going to be bid out, so you're going to see some meetings where we approve bids on those public utility projects and public streets projects, and then we roll right into construction season um, on those. So if you want uh, information on what projects we have, uh, we can provide that on our website. We already do, mm -hmm. uh, and you can see what construction projects are slated for 2020. And finally, uh, speaking of construction, or I guess in this case deconstruction, mm -hmm. Fox Theater, continuing to come down brick by brick it is. at times uh but you've 
got some exciting news about uh, what might go in there next or what people sure. think should go in there next. Right? Yeah, you know, and that's something else that we want to hear about. But the, the project was um, moving right along. The roof trusses were the biggest issue because with the weight of Wisconsin snow, um, we didn't want the roof collapsing with, uh, we have found one failed structure, a uh, roof truss, and a couple of other ones that were deteriorating. We, that was made safe pretty early on in the process. But taking it apart brick by brick uh, so they can reuse that material it's been slower, uh, but they're going to be finishing up here in the next month or two. So we're sending out what's called a request for proposals. We don't have it drafted completely yet, uh, but we're going to ask people, what do you want to do with the space that's left? Um, there's going to be a significant space that's left with the historic front and a, a public space or an open space and a, like a ballroom on the second floor. What do you want to see done with it? Uh, what can you do with it? Do you want to add on and make it a, a I don't know, a restaurant or do you want to... Uh, you know, do you have other ideas? We don't know where this is going to take us, but we're going to send that request for proposals out. And anybody who's got an idea, and more importantly, the financial wherewithal to make it happen, is asked to submit their thoughts through that RFP. Um, tell us what you want to do, how you plan on doing it, what your timeline is, what it'll do for the city, and like an interview process, we'll evaluate those, um, take the the best ones, and bring them to council for consideration, and and you might be the next owner and developer of the former Fox Theater. Yeah, you know, make it, make a reality show mm -hmm. out of it almost. I mean, you you can do that. Just in saying, you know, what you're describing there, I've got, yeah. okay, well, we've got a yoga studio and a juice bar in the uh, uh -huh. lower level, some yoga studio there on top, go. maybe some, you know, uh, a meeting space in the behind, the, behind there, mixed use right. development. That's all the, that's all the freight, all Lots the, of uh, ideas. Raise, all the rage these days, right? Yeah. Maybe we can get the, the property brothers to come in and flip it or something. <laughs> I don't know if we can find a bus big enough right. uh, to move in front of it, but, but, but we'll try. certainly it's, you know, it's something, it's prime real estate right there in downtown. It it's got historical value to it. There's a lot of great stuff around it. So really, you, there's the, the groundwork has been laid for, for somebody to be very successful in this spot. Absolutely. And the city stands by to help them. I know the business council's on board. Uh, we can put you in touch with state offices, uh, Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, Synergy, those sorts of things, to help get that dream a reality. Uh, but we want to hear about your dream. Mm -hmm. We want to know what you want it to be. And uh, how can how can folks get involved with that process? I mean, I know it's sometime this week. You're probably going to have the draft finalized. Yeah. Right? How do folks get those in? Then? So they can go to the city website, stevenspoint.com, and we'll have information directing them to the RFP. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll look forward to, again, where that project goes as well. So... Is there anything else that we uh, we should know here as we get ready for what's going to be you know a busy month of uh, of March? You're going to have trivia week <coughs> coming up. Excuse me. Like, bless you. <laughs> um, you are going to take some time off to get healthy, and then what yeah. else? <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, um, uh, you know, there's so much to do uh, getting ready for those summer projects. We're uh, we're ready working on Riverfront Rendezvous, getting the headliners lined up, and filling in the rest of the entertainment gaps. Working with the fireworks uh, vendors and. Uh, so all of these projects are getting planned right now. So it's relatively busy around City Hall, even though you don't see a lot of things happening. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the planning that goes on behind it. So we're going to be doing that probably for the next month or two. Of course, Trivia Weekend is coming up 51 years here in the city of Stevens Point. I've been playing. This will be my 43rd year of playing. Can you believe that? Yeah, that's... So. It's certainly a sight to behold. I should I should really just take it upon myself here this month to come down for Trivia Weekend uh -huh. and just, just be in Stevens Point to feel the energy. Sure. We'd love to have you. Uh, the more people that we can get involved, the better off we are. Of course, with weather warming up, uh, waiting for the roads to get swept up so I can bring the motorcycle out and we'll bring the <laughs> boat out of storage. And yeah. Before you know it, it'll be summer. Absolutely. Well, we always appreciate the time there, Mike. And again, look forward to chatting again uh, next month. All right. See you soon.